Hello, this is Don Martin from Solid Shell Security, and I'm back with another Python programming tutorial uh, focusing on the chat server. Um, for those of you guys who have watched the series in the past, especially like, you know, around the time that I was putting it out, um, I apologize for a video not coming out very often. It's been almost, I think, two years. Um, been in the Navy, they've been keeping me pretty busy. So, um, one thing I want to mention about the past couple videos, uh, I was going back over the source code. I wrote a new source code Saturday. I was going back over the old source code and realized that it was just not what it should have been, not what I expected it. Um, at the time, I was kind of in a hurry, and sometimes that can lead to poorly written source code. Um, so here, I'm back with a new set of source code. And close out here, clear this up. So I'm back with a new set of source code that, in my opinion, is a little bit more well written and it does more of what we want it to do. Um, <coughs> yeah, so I'll just get a move on with that. Once again, here's the channel. Um, bring all that down. Alright, so as you see, I have three files here. Ignore the, the server pie. That was something else I was, I was working on. Um, I sat down for like, I think six hours and wrote all this out. Had a lot of problems, but eventually was able to troubleshoot it. Been a while since I touched Python. So, but in a day, retopped myself and rewrote completely new. Oh, dress is already in use. Alright. Yeah, I was just test running it. Um, let me just switch the ports real quick. Then we'll get a move on. Alright, that ought to do it. So we'll get back to the source code in a minute. I just want to show you guys that it does work. So we have our servers running and over. So. So I'm running my server over here, running the client over here. Chat underscore client .py. Server is acknowledging that there's a connection. It's telling us who it is and telling us that it's now connected. So now I'm going to enter a message. It sends. It confirms that it sends. Tell us who sent it, what they sent, and then also tells the data sent to all clients. And here we go. We received the message back. Was crying for a second, maybe just mad that I'm not giving him attention right now. Quit out of here, and that's one more thing I gotta fix. <clears throat> so, as you see, it works for what we need it to for right now. All right, now we're gonna get to the source code. It's uh, quite a bit of code, I got a lot of comments in here to help explain and kind of read through them as I'm going through it. Um, probably quote it a little bit too. All right, so here is our server source code. Here we have imported the library for sockets. Another way you may see it imported is import socket. Put in the that. Um, this right here lets us know that it's a comment, so don't comment it out right there. You can do it that way, but if you do it this way, coming down here, it just requires a lot more typing. You gotta do socket.sockets, .socket, so that way you let it know that it's referencing the library. But if you do it this way, you don't have to do all that typing from socket import and then do an asterisk. I'm gonna remove that. All right, so right now, we're not even gonna worry about this. This will come up in a little bit. We're gonna worry about our main function. So I have the program split into three functions. As you can see, we got a main function and then down here we're going to call to run the main function by calling main and then two parentheses which is where any kind of arguments would go but we don't have any arguments for our main function. So we create a variable called s and we equal it to socket and then we set the parameters to af underscore inet and socstream. Um, this creates our socket and it, most importantly what the arguments do is they create a TCP socket and my roommate's dog is barking. All right. So, 
you don't have to include this you could just do that it'll still work just the same because it automatically defaults to af finet and sock string they do have to be in all capitals by the way so this creates our socket and then now we're going to bind our socket so this is kind of really what makes it a server is that we create a socket and then we binded it to something so it's going to take two parameters this is going to be where our host is and this is going to be where our port is this lets us know that it's local host there's three ways you can usually define it you can either put in local host like that um, you can leave it blank like I did or you can use 127.0.0.1 which points basically back at your own computer same thing as local host all right so we binded our socket, created now a server. This right here, s.listen. So it's basically a function inside of the socket library that tells the server like how many connections to listen for in the background. We're gonna print server is running. Now here's another important step. Connection address equals s.accept. So what this s is, is it's gonna be an object. So it's object of the function. So S is not only a variable, it's now being used as an object, which means it's being used with functions. So s.accept right here. So basically this is gonna tell the server or right, await for a connection. Whenever we get a connection, accept it, and then store the connection details and variables con and address, also short for connection and address. Now we're gonna print the address and tell it that tell us that we're now connected. So it's telling us the client's connected to the address. <clears throat> now we have a loop here. While true, I'll get to this point in a minute while I'm going over the above functions, but we got data equals receive data. We're gonna pass two arguments, S and connection. Then we have broadcast data and we're gonna pass it three parameters, S connection and data. All right. Now we're going to go back up here. So here's the function receive data. Define receive data takes our two parameters, S and connection. You could actually name this R, R, you can name them whatever you wanted to. I just kept it as the variable names that are listed below just to kind of keep it simple so that way you guys can kind of follow along. But you can put anything here, S and connection are still going to be passed here. All right. So now we have data equals connection dot receive, and it takes the argument of 1024. What 1024 tells us is going to be, the, it's our buffer, it's how many bytes we can take. So at most we can take 1024 bytes of data. You can set this to any number. Uh, usually a base of 2 is what's used. So like 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, all that good stuff. So we're going to set equal to data. So it's going to say, all right, let's create a variable called data. And then we're going to, whenever we create data, we're going to run a function that says, that waits to receive data and it's going to store it into data. So it's going to wait to receive a message and then store what it receives inside of the variable data. We're going to print it, the connection it came from and what was sent. And we're going to make a new line just to make it a little bit more prettier then we're going to return data. Speaking of return data, this is where this comes in. The problem with a lot of my previous source code was I was kind of trying to abuse the variable scope, which is why things weren't really working how I wanted them to in flow. Um, it's just a product of trying to speed through and trying to create videos and content and writing source and getting stuff done as fast as I could, which you guys suffered for for those guys that watched it in the past and are picking up this video now. So I have a little illustration to kind of show you why things weren't working the way I kind of wanted to in the past a little bit and also to explain kind of what's going on with the variable scope. So let's talk about variable scope. Variable scope is basically rules for a variable and one of the major things is it has to do with a lot with like usage. You get into like the heap and stack. I'm not gonna go into all that. You can look it up on Google. Very valuable information for a uh, programmer, the heap and the stack. But, so basically, 
we have a variable here called s and it lives inside a main. It doesn't exist anywhere else but inside a main. However, what we can do is we can pass that variable to be borrowed by another function as we did here. So we created a variable s, gave it some properties or some values, and then we passed all the information from s into receive data or broadcast data. So here's a little illustration. Illustration, I completely misspelled that, a variable. So here we have the main function. We have four variables that live and function in the main function. One variable that lives in receive data function. And there's not really any variables that live here. We just pass it and then it does something with the data. All right. So we have our connection S and it's passed to receive data. Then we create a variable data and then we're going to pass this value down here. So that's what's going on down here. So in order to take the the message that was sent to us by the client, we have to store it into a var variable and have to be able to pass it down here so that we can use it in broadcast data. All right. And that's where this return statement comes in. And that's what's going on right here. See where the arrow's pointing at data. So data is going to equal whatever this is going to output. And this is going to output what was sent to us. So the receive function and the data value here, we got a message called hello. So now in the main function, data down here is going to equal data up here because that's what receive data function now equals. It's a little bit confusing how it works. I probably should name it a different variable instead of using a lot of the word data. So we could easily change this to say message if we wanted to. I'm going to just keep it as data because the illustration is already done. Alright, so we received hello up here. Now this equals hello. And because this equals hello, this is going to equal hello. So that's what return does. It makes this equal whatever's here. So see data as connection, as we see happened here. We got a message stored in the valuable data, made our function receive data equal the message that was stored here by using this. And we create another variable called data here and stored what this equaled, which was this and this. All right. Now we have another function called broadcast data. We're going to pass it three variables as connection and data. As you can see on the illustration, s connection and then data was passed the broadcast function. And now what it does with that is it takes the connection and it sends all of the data or message. So we received hello up here. We're going to return it or basically make receive data equal hello, store hello here, pass hello here, and send it to everybody here. And then we're going to print data was sent to all clients just to kind of let you know that it did work. If it didn't work, then well, the program would obviously program would obviously break. And then you have to debug it from there. But this is just pretty much for looks. So while this is true, it'll run these functions. And that's basically what this does. Um, a little bit confusing as far as when I got into the variable scope and got into this. Hopefully the illustration explains it. If not, you guys can comment and I'll try to explain on there the best as I can. Sometimes it's kind of hard to find the words. But uh, the source code for the server and for the chat client will be provided in the description. I'm going to post it up on Pastebin. Now let's get over to the client. This is going to be real quick. It's basically the same client I've always been using. I just did a couple of extra things. Uh, from socket import set host equal import you can also do this instead of doing this I just didn't want to create too many variables when I was doing this post import create our socket TCP um, s so it takes the properties of s of the socket uses the connect function to connect to basically be our local host on port 8001 while true 
message equals raw input so as you see oh I exit that so it says enter message person enters message hits enter and we're gonna send the message unless it says if message equals quit this is just something I put in to exit out of the uh, client while I was testing the code without pressing control C <coughs> so if message equals quit we're gonna close the socket and then we're gonna break out of the, out of the loop um, so we're gonna send the message and data equals s dot receive 1024 so 1024 bytes of data and then we're gonna print the data so I'll show you again that that worked So this source code right here uh, mainly focuses on dealing with uh, having a server and one client. Um, of course, as I next time I sit down to tinker with this and try to improve it, I'm going to work on making it handle multiple clients at the same time. But just kind of want to go back and kind of start all over again with a little bit better source code what's in my opinion and you can also write this a couple different ways instead of having two functions you can put it into one and not need all of this that's possible um, the great thing about programming is you have a problem and your solution for it it doesn't matter how you write it as long as it solves it and there's a million different ways you could write this program um, I did in my couple other videos however I had a lot of broken stuff but I I could go back and fix that but decided to rewrite it in a way that I felt was a little bit more organized, a little bit more better, and also got a chance to try and get a little bit into a variable scope with you guys. So the main thing to pull from this is uh, probably the variable scope that when we create a variable, it only lives where we create it. So we create a variable in main function, it lives in the main function, but we can pass it through arguments to other functions. So that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to try and work out source code for the next one. And I apologize for the people that have been waiting for another video to come out for a while now. I apologize to you guys. Um, yeah, that's about it. Out.